glory and we give you all praise. We just lift up your holy name, Father Lord, today we thank you that you have brought us here to meet, to join together in one accord, Father Lord, to hear you speak into our hearts. Father Lord, we ask that you just take this meeting, you take control of this meeting, Father Lord, we place it into your hands, we surrender ourselves, Father Lord, into your hands, we surrender unashamed worship ministry into your hands, we surrender this meeting, Father Lord, on today, the 1st of June, Father Lord, 2024, into your hands, Father Lord. We surrender each and every person that comes to join us as a guest, Father Lord, to hear the word spoken today, Father Lord, into your hands, Father Lord. And we ask that, Father Lord, you reign, you reign, you reign supreme, Father Lord, you reign, Father Lord. You take control, Father Lord, and you have your way, Father Lord. I ask that anything that we have brought within us, Father Lord, today, as we convene, as we meet, Father Lord, anything that may be stopping us or blocking us from truly hearing, receiving your word, Father Lord, help us to remove it, Father Lord, help us to transform it, Father Lord, into something that will bring us closer to you, Father Lord, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us understanding that these words that we receive, Father Lord, will open up a new air of understanding in our hearts and our minds of father lord we can truly take in this knowledge take in this understanding father lord and apply it into our lives daily father lord we ask that father lord as we open our hearts unto you you reside in our hearts father lord take out anything that does not reflect or resonate with you father lord in jesus mighty name fill us up with your spirit fill us up with your love fill us up father lord with your understanding your wisdom father lord in jesus mighty name amen Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Nikki, for opening us up in prayer. Amen. I appreciate you so much, my lovely. I just want to um, just kind of start off by just saying a very big and warm welcome to everyone for joining and connecting with us here today. I want to say as well, um, more or less to everyone, just thank you so much for just taking the time out, taking the time out to be able to connect and fellowship with us. I know how it is, especially when you've got a list from A to Z with loads of different things to do. I know what it's like, especially on a Saturday when you're trying to catch up with everything that probably ended up getting pushed down the list throughout the week. And then you're trying to catch it up on the weekend. So I just want you to know that the fact that you were able to say yes, the fact that you were able to kind of make a decision to connect with us today, the fact that you were able to just listen to what it is that the spirit of God has dropped in your heart to want to be able to just listen, glean, and be able to hear for what it is that's going to be deposited today. I just want you to know that you're in the right place and the right space to be able to hear and receive from God here today. Amen. So I just want to say a very big and warm welcome to that and just appreciate the effort and the sacrifice, <laughs> keyword sacrifice, that you are making to connect with us here today. But um, as I always do, I just want to just say for those of you that are connecting with us, especially towards this recording um, for the very first time, we are indeed Unashamed Worship. We are a worship ministry. And what we do is provide spontaneous worship experiences in order for one to be able to begin or to be able to continue to live a daily surrendered lifestyle and what we do throughout the year especially from February all the way to November we hold different types of meetings throughout the year we do monthly meetings that have a set theme we do um, a, a workshops that we do an annual workshop we have also an annual conference that we do each November but the key thing is we come together wanting to hear directly from the throne of God we want to hear revelations we want to hear the word of God we want to hear something that's going to encourage us in our walk with God we want to be able to hear from God in order to be corrected we want to be able to hear from God in order to be able to ensure that we're on the right track because sometimes we can be on this walk and ultimately we might be on a track and realize that we're actually in a track that's not really the track that he wants us to be on we come together to fellowship to be able to hear from God to receive a word a revelation to be able to go deeper in our walk as well as our relationship with God but above all to be able to 
surrender, know what it is to have and be in that place of total surrender and to be able to live that lifestyle for real, not by words, say, not by, for instance, you know, in a way in which that makes us feel good, but to truly be a reflection of Christ, but above all, to be able to really live it for real in truth. Amen. And all we do, we do everything with the word of God. We believe in the practicality of the word of God. And we believe in surrender because that is what we live and breathe. Amen. So that is us in the very much nutshell. So in the midst of that introduction, I mentioned the fact that we do hold meetings on the first Saturday of every month. And we do that throughout the year, all the way in the run up towards our annual meeting that happens in the month of November. So today is one of those monthly meetings where we have a set theme and we have a member in the team that will take the lead on the theme for that particular month. So leading the theme today is Dr. Heather. And the theme title is Convenient Sacrifice. So I'm not going to say anything at all because I think from the moment I saw those two words put together, I was like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> literally, because ultimately there's a lot to say in the mid just with those two words being put together. But I know that the God has a word for you. And I know for a fact that ultimately you're not here by just the fact you just rolled up. There is something that God wants you to receive, that God wants to show you, that God wants to expose, that God wants to highlight. So I don't know where you are right now. I know for a fact that I'm in a room that I ran into to get away from the kids to do this introduction but I don't know where particularly you are but I just want you to just allow yourself to just be open to what it is that God is going to say to you in your season what God is going to say to you in your situation and what God is going to say to you based on where you are at in your walk with God because there is something for you here today you are not going to leave this meeting empty you will leave this meeting with something for real that is going to be able to enhance your walk in God and enhance your relationship. And if you end up realizing and recognizing the fact that you don't even have a relationship, there will be something in the midst of what you're going to hear here today that is going to encourage you to want to have an encounter, but want to have a relationship with Jesus for real. Amen. So wherever you are, just remove all the distractions take away all the distractions amen we're not going to be holding you for a five six hour meeting amen we know how many hours there are in a day we're going to hold you for some intimate quality time where you're going to hear an outpour and receive a download really from God himself amen so I just want you to just allow yourself to just be able to hear clearly to be able to listen reflect upon your life reflect upon where you exactly are at and where you are and just allow the spirit of god to speak to you directly amen it's not about the whom of the mouthpiece it's about the mouth it's about the words that is coming from the mouthpiece that is coming to meet you where you are at today amen so let's listen in let's have our hearts very much open and let's just allow god to speak to us in the intimate way. So I'm going to hand it over right now to Dr. Heather, who's going to literally be a guide and a torch and all of that within this theme. And um, the Spirit of God will definitely speak through her. Amen. Over to you. Good evening, everybody. How are you all? Thank you so much for joining. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Nikki. Thank you, Prophetess Alicia. Amen. Just pray God just take full possession over my mind, <laughs> over my soul, over my spirit, over my body in Jesus' mighty name. We just pray that as I speak, may the Holy Spirit speak to you in Jesus' mighty name. We break every spirit of condemnation. We break every spirit of guilt. We break every spirit that will contradict the voice of God in your in your heart today in Jesus' mighty name. And as it was stated, it's God speaking. So hear the voice of God and allow him to do what he wants to do, whether it's to push or to pull you back 
whatever he wants to do within you today, just be humble enough to just say, Lord, here I am in Jesus mighty name. So as I was reflecting today, um, thinking about the year of or where we are in terms of the unashamed um, stream, which is the fifth month, as Mr. Nikki said in the, um, I think she put in the group chat, um, we're literally halfway in um, of the year of our cycle, should I say, in terms of like teaching and so forth. And then in the year itself, 2024, we are actually the sixth month. So we're literally halfway down. So it's quite interesting how the Holy Spirit gave me this theme um, as a way of reflection. Amen. So if you have your paper or your phone or whatever you have with you, just Ha allow the holy spirit to speak to you that's that's all i ask because it is going to be a reflective one in jesus mighty name amen it's good to pause sometimes especially as ministers leaders <laughs> you know whether we're, we're parents and so forth whatever capacity that we are with at work church whatever the home um we're always doing something. And so it's always good to pause, especially as we're mid-year, mid-cycle, to be able to just see where are we actually and allow the Holy Spirit to do the pulling or the pushing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So convenient sacrifice. So as we know, <laughs> the, the two don't work together. Amen. The two don't work together. How can we be conveniently sacrificing amen but the truth is most of us do it without us even realizing that we are doing it and so it's good to pause and see where is what does this actually mean and let's really focus it focus on this because as we know in order for us to truly be positioned in a but god encounter we have to see that what is the blockage and that blockage could just very well be that you are conveniently sacrificing unto God and others. And so let's look at ourselves and see, am I, is my heart posture positioned to have a but God encounter? In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So as an intro, the Bible always states, and I always will start with this scripture all the time in terms of the fulfillment of the commandment, which is to love God love ourselves and then love others. Amen. He says we need to do this with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Amen. He said this is the most important one. We see later on he talks about they will know us by our fruit. And he's not talking about the external fruit that we hear preaching all the time. He's talking about our internal fruit. Amen. He says that, you know, wherever whatever season we're in, he said, despite of what we go through, we will be, we will be fruitful. Was he talking about works? No, he was talking about our fruit. He was talking about our internal life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Bible also talks about being an aroma of Christ when it talks about sacrifice. So the first one is love it talks about being an aroma i think last month um, when we talked about the power of character that's something that came up a lot about being an aroma being a reflection being an expression of christ in second corinthians 2 15 to 17 it talks about being an aroma <laughs> last month it was like do you stink does your character stink what do you smell like do you smell like death or do you smell like life this is important especially when we're talking about um moving on from character to sacrifice how does your sacrifice smell of what do you smell of you know you may feel like you smell perfectly fine until you go outside and you're like mm, what is that smell or someone comes towards you and you're so comfortable in how you smell but when someone comes close to you they really you know you realize that oh there's a stench on me or i smell of beer or i smell of you know whatever it is i stink what aroma are you giving off? Amen. Because at the end of the day, we know what the Bible says. Amen. And then we should also know that um, the biggest aroma was Jesus. The fact that he died and the fact that he sacrificed himself. And in thinking about that, it really emphasized to me the point of there were so many people that were crucified on that cross. But the fact of the matter is Jesus's death on that cross. Not only did he fulfill what he had to do here, but his heart posture. Because anyone could have had, we God, Jesus, God could have given us an assignment to go on that cross, but how He entered that cross made a difference to how we, um, uh, how we receive all our salvation today. Amen. So how how we do things is important. 
aroma is it has an aroma whether it smells whether it's of death or whether it's of life ask yourself what do i smell of what smell of am i giving up and am i actually giving out of love or out of obligation that's something that we have to constantly ask ourselves amen then romans 12 1 to 2 it emphasizes the importance of dedicating ourselves as living sacrifices our body to present it to god holistically body mind soul a uh, body soul and spirit as um, living sacrifices unto God. And it says in order to do this, we have to ensure that we are renewing our mind. Amen. Being a living sacrifice is the fruit of a renewal of mind. We cannot live, a, we cannot be living sacrifices and not have a mind renewed. You can see that back in the day, like when I look at myself, the things that I used to do, which was normal for me, when I'm more mature in Christ, I realized that what was I doing then? That is where you're looking at it because there was a renewal of mind. There were certain doctrines that I had to unlearn. There were certain patterns of behavior that I had to learn. There are certain characteristics and personality traits that I normalized that I had to unlearn in order to become a reflection, a, an aroma of Christ, of his love and of all that he has um you know, positioned me to be here and reflect here on this earth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So living sacrifice, renewal of mind. And then that is when we can discern God's will for us, which comes to the sacrifice part. Amen. If you don't know who you are, how can you know where you're going? How can you know what you're called to do? Amen. Some of us were just on this, like, you know, walking and we don't know what we're doing. We just know that, yeah, this is, this looks like church. This looks like what I'm supposed to do. This looks like Jesus. This looks like what is preached on the altar. And so it's normal for me. But what is God telling you to do? He said to discern it for yourself. It's not for everyone, it's for you. So what are you giving off? What are what is it that you are dedicating unto God? Living sacrifice. What are you dedicating unto God? And is it what he has called for you? Does he find what you do, who, who you are becoming? Um pleasing acceptable holy in his sight amen surrender is the notion being set apart is the notion amen so it's important to be aware of the narratives that we've adopted about god and about our faith because it shapes how we serve god it shapes how we what kind of treatment as well that we allow but it also reflects on the way we love others amen and so it's constantly that we have to evaluate our narratives evaluate the biblical biblical truths um that we feel is biblical but it's not because sometimes we can use scripture and it has nothing it's not it's not it's not truth. Amen. And so um looking at that and ensuring that the Holy Spirit is constantly we're allowing the Holy Spirit to constantly speak to us, to renew us, amen, to refine us, amen, in Jesus' mighty name, and learning every false ideology, unbiblical narratives and stuff, knowing God for yourself. You know, if we see from generation to generation, there are certain narratives that are just not right, but because of the generational thing, it's continued, but we have to be the ones to stop to say, this is not right. This is not biblical. This is what God says. And sometimes it's not for you to go and broadcast it and start telling people off. Just know for yourself that this is what God says is acceptable and live it because it's how we live that will determine what people will also see or model as well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So talk, Paul talks a lot about, you know, spiritual milk, solid milk. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. He was saying that, you know, why are you acting like babies? You know, why do you need to be spoon fed and stuff like that? You know, in the Bible, it talks a lot about how he was saying that, you know, um, why are you acting immature? Because do you feel that you are more important than anyone else? And he was constantly saying that basically you have this kind of convenience based faith where it's more self self-serving than actually serving others and so he was saying that true sacrifice really involves a commitment it co involves a denial of self it involves a, a um obedience unto god amen it involves discomfort because a lot of us don't like discomfort when we see discomfort we think it's satan it involves a lot of discomfort amen 
and it also involves a transformation. So he spoke a lot about that in terms of solid food and needing milk and so forth and saying that how, you know, actions driven by jealousy and division and stuff was what was causing a divide within within them and causing them to be immature in their, in their walk and the way they give gave and served, amen, and what they were given off. And so again, convenience-based faith produces convenience-based sacrifice, amen. So let's evaluate and let's go more on a reflection based in terms of our renewed mind. Amen. Do you go the extra mile to help someone, even if it means coming out of your comfort zone? When was the last time you did that? When was the last time that you found it hard to forgive someone, but you chose to forgive anyway. And who in your life constantly shows love through their actions? And has it inspired you to love others well or serve others well? Or has it created a sense of jealousy and resentment comparison and envy when was a moment you took ownership of your own mistake even when it was difficult and did you admit it without you know um adding all these stories on top justification have you allowed god have you been passive in your walk with god how has your walk with God been? Has it been passive? Have you been the one that says, oh, I'm going to let go and let God, I'm, a, I'm just going to let God's will be done and not doing anything about it, just being so passive in your walk with God? How is your relationship with God for real? And when was the time where you realized that your ego was taking over, that you said, you know what, I need to humble myself? Or maybe you're at that place where you've actually fell off that horse and you feel so embarrassed to stand up that you're trying to justify yourself down there on that ground. Where are you in your walk with God? And how are you willing to truly renew your mind and allow God to do the work within you so that what comes out of you will reflect the aroma of Christ? So what belief systems still needs to be shaped in that of Christ? What are the things that you are nurturing within you that you're like, mm -mm. I've seen the fruits of it and it's not working, but you're still trying to push through. But how long are you going to push through? What are those things you're nurturing? What are those conversations that you're nurturing? What are the things that are getting in the way that's causing you to live a life that is full of convenience? Because a life full of convenience does not glorify God. A life full of convenience hinders your growth but i'll go into that a bit later it blocks you it dims you and sometimes we like to blame people and say this person's dimming me this person standing in my way this way no sometimes it's you you've chosen to live a life of convenience some of you are waiting to be called by people and the, because the people that, that you are looking for have not called you, you have stopped responding to God and life filled with convenience. So you stay to what's familiar. You stay to what's more okay, where you can navigate in. When God is calling you deeper, maybe you haven't even reached the surface stage yet. But God is still calling you whatever level you're in. God don't watch that. He just wants you to keep walking towards him, to keep becoming. So where in your life do you see that there is a friction there because I've chosen a life of convenience? And so everything that I give off is conveniently sacrificial, but is not biblically sacrificial. There's no aroma coming out. The only aroma that's coming out of you is that of the works of the flesh. Because at the end of the day, if God does not recognize what you're doing, what's the point? 
if you're gaining the attention of so many people around you, but God is not clapping for you, what's the point? If it's convenient for your flesh, it makes you feel good. You have a good appetite. You're good, but you're, you know, but later on, there's an emptiness. There's a stagnancy. There's an exhaustion that comes out of you. You need to ask yourself, am I living life conveniently? I'm, I'm able to live enough, to breathe enough, to survive enough. But he said he's given us life, which is eternity, and life more abundantly. The abundance should be seen here on earth. So that when you are looking around for people to disciple, when they see your life, they will recognize God through you. Do people recognize God through you? Do people have a an hunger and an appetite to run towards God when they see you? Or do you look the same? Do you look the same? Is the conversation the same? Yeah, I'm supposed to do that. Yeah, me too. I'm supposed to do that. Yeah, I haven't finished that. Yeah, me too. I haven't finished that. Oh, yeah, you know, God. Oh, yeah. How is your conversation? What's the fruit? That's coming out of your life. What is the repetition that you're constantly seeing? It's time to step out of convenience and step into who truly God has called you to be and to do here on earth in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says in Mark 8, 34 to 35, that whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. So what are you saving? Are you saving the life that God has freed you from? Or are you truly dying to self? Because sometimes what we think of as being sacrifices are really just things that make life easier for us. Maybe it looks like we were giving up something on the outside. It can be a job. It can be a certain decision that we wanted to go through. It could be whatever that thing is, a relationship and so forth. But what I truly want us to understand here that is not about the actions we take because a lot of us sacrifice. Each and every one can talk about the sacrifices that we make on a daily basis. But it's not about what you give or even what you have lost because in both cases, you can lose something. What it really is, is who am I becoming in the process? Who am I becoming in the process? That's where the real sacrifice stems from. Who am I becoming? Because if I'm giving and I am still envious, that's a life filled of convenience. If I'm giving and I still hate myself, that is conveniently sacrificing, but it's not true sacrifice. Because Sacrifice is a posture. And that posture can only be defined and really seen through Christ. He knows, but the truth is we know too. Because when we go home, we know the narratives behind what we did. And that's what God is ch checking. God is not checking how you gave. You may, you may have given 10,000 pounds to a church yesterday. God is not looking at that. He's looking at your posture. It may have sacrificed three months of your mortgage. But how did you give? You may have spent two, three months counseling someone. But if in the midst of all that, you were looking for something in return, you were just conveniently sacrificing. It was something that was just to appease your Lord, flesh. Oh my soul. Father, I thank you for your protection and your presence, oh God. Amen. That is in our life, oh God. I thank you for the month of May. Sorry. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, conveniently sacrificing. So that is where the real, real growth happens. And that's why you see that people get bitter 
or walk away from God after they have sacrificed because it was a convenience. It wasn't true sacrifice. That is why when certain people do things and they feel empty or they feel used because there was a sense of convenience that took place, convenience in terms of appeasing the flesh. And in the end, there was no fulfillment. In the end, the applause that you were waiting for never came because man is on and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know when God is truly clapping for you. So where are you in your walk? Making sacrifices that cater to our fleshly desires, whether it's trying to fill the void. Maybe you never got a thank you when you were younger. Maybe you never got a welcome when you were younger. Maybe you were never even, maybe you were never even picked at school. And so every time you sacrifice, you have that in mind. I want to be picked. I want to be clapped for. I want to be recognized. I want to have a banner with my name and I want a certificate. Conveniently sacrificing. So instead of truly obeying God's voice or responding to the voice of God, what we are actually doing is sacrificing the surface, which is not truly aligned to God's plan. And so therefore it becomes a self-serving act disguised as sacrifice. And so back to love, sacrificing in that way is unloving. No sacrifice. It is unloving. It doesn't fulfill the scripture. True sacrifice should reflect love. Love for God and love for others. It's our sacrifices that makes us love. It's our sacrifices that leads us. Is our, our sacrifice will either lead us away from love or lead us towards love. So the question is, how are you? Are you still talking about the person that never said thank you two years ago? And so because of that, you have vowed to never give. And because of that, when God tells you to do something, you say no. And because of that, you said you stick onto those vows because of what you have told yourself. That's a convenience. Because you don't want to get hurt. You don't want to get hurt. But the truth is when we're dealing with people, when we're dealing with souls, we get hurt every single day. Ministry is messy. It's not nice. But if you say to yourself that I'm going to isolate myself, and pray for people in the background. I'm not. I'm never going to do the work of God. I'll do it in my own style. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. That's a convenience that God does not recognize. Because all you're doing is dimming yourself. And Satan is laughing. And Satan is using it as a gate to go in and trample you. So sometimes the discomfort you're feeling is not because you're in the wrong place. It's because of your posture. It's because of those vows you've made in your heart. It's because of the things you keep saying when people tell you to do certain things. Oh, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. So when God calls you, you're like, I'm not worthy. Oh, maybe this person can do it. Oh, this person can do it better. You know, social media is all over our faces and stuff like that. Sometimes what God is giving you to say, you don't want to say because convenience. Convenience does not glorify God. It may be a sacrifice because you may feel a bit funny. You may feel a bit of discomfort, but it doesn't mean it's true sacrifice. It's a convenience. Because sacrifice for real goes against our flesh. Sacrifice for real is love. Sacrifice for real is a response to God. It's through our relationship with Christ. It's through the Holy Spirit. Sacrifice. Most of the things that we do, sometimes is that natural sense of, of sacrifice. You don't need the Holy Spirit. It's just something that, oh, as long as this person likes me, I'll continue to do. As long as this person keeps calling my name, I'll continue to do. As long as I know there's a promotion coming at the end, I'm going to continue to do. But when the promotion don't come, I will stop. That's convenience because that's for you. That's not for the glory of God. That's not to show forth the glory of God. That's not to raise disciples. That's not for people to see Christ. It's for you. It's to make you feel good. It's to make you feel happy. It's to make you feel proud. It's to make you feel what you did never got maybe when you were younger or even as an adult, whatever it is. It's to make you feel. It's to make you want something. Maybe you want that man. Maybe you want that woman. Whatever it is. It's to make you want that something in the end. So the reward is only stuck in on earth, but the heavenly reward is not there. 
So let us truly examine. Yeah, you may have external costs and stuff like that, but the true sacrifice comes with internal transformation. Who am I becoming as I give? Is it drawing me closer to God? Is it shaping me into a loving um, person? And am I truly aligned to the will of God? Am I giving out of what God has told me to do? Am I doing it out of my flesh? Because I feel bad. Because I don't want that person to leave me. I don't want to feel rejected from this group. What is it that, that it, it is? Because you can give, but if it's not in alignment with Christ, why am I giving? That's the question. Why am I giving? Because then am I truly becoming who God has called me to be? Or am I becoming what someone else wants me to be? So think about it. Face to the situation. For example, like a job, opportunity, a relationship, and so forth. And you're like, okay, let me let me get away from it and stuff like that. It's all good. You've gotten away from it. But the fact is, what's happening in your mind? What's happening in your heart during that, that process? Because a real sacrifice changes us. It transforms us. We don't recognize ourselves. There, there has to be a level of maturity. That's what Paul was talking about. He was talking about maturity. The more you sacrifice, you, you become something different. You become someone different. The things that you do, the excitement, the joy that comes out of your giving, it becomes different. There's a maturity that comes. There's a transformation that takes place that we can't even speak about. That even when we know that, you know, people are going to, you know, do nonsense, there's still that excitement that who is next? Who else can I bless? Who else can I sow into? Who else can I give of this, this, this aroma to? Not, uh, no longer, mm -mm, no. Because mm -mm, mm -mm. then it shows me that it was a convenience. And when it wasn't met, when that need wasn't met, you shied away. Convenience. True sacrifice goes beyond external action because you can give off 10 hours of your time but if in those 10 hours you were disconnected that wasn't a sacrifice that was literally a waste of time <laughs> not acknowledged at all so the person may be like whoa she's been with me for 10 years 10 hours but your heart posture was rejected by god hmm. what's the point what is the point? So it's about what happens inside of us. It's the way our hearts are. It's the transformation of our hearts. It's the shaping of our character. It's the strengthening of our faith. It's ensuring that we're drawing closer to God, that we reflect him. Amen. And that we are giving up in order to become. Become. Amen. So. Let's think of the narratives that stand in the way of or that tugs us towards convenience. A lot of it is self-doubt. When we talk ourselves out of things and we like, you know, and I think I've already spoke about this, that, you know, we, we doubt ourselves so much that when God is speaking to us, like Gideon, it's like, are you sure it's me or even Moses? Like, are you sure it's me? Are you sure you want to use me? You know, we speak up, we, we can call out so many people's names and we discount ourselves. And that leads us to live a life of familiarity. That leads us to live a life that we just constantly avoid anything that pushes us to where God is calling us to. And so you may have stepped forward somehow. Terror steps forward but he stopped at convenience. When he was better than before, he stopped. So there was a sacrifice that took place because he left what he knew to something familiar, but he stopped at convenience because that's what we do. We, we, we move into like, okay, I used to have one friend. Now I have five that I actually open up to, but God is calling you to more. He wants you to disciple people. But there is something in you still 
that says, I don't like people. I can't give myself off to people just in case. So the convenience lies in the fact that, God, I will go a little bit here, but I'm not going to go where you're tugging me towards because there's a narrative that is standing in the way for me truly giving me my giving you my yes. Convenience, terror, sacrificed, but it was a convenient sacrifice. Amen. Sometimes the fear of failure can also be when we're scared of failing. Sometimes um, the, the fear of failing is not even just about trauma. It could be that you were in a place where you were bigged up so much in your home or that decisions were taken, taken for you all the time that failing is scary because you feel like, oh, if I fail, people are going to leave me. People are going to reject me. People are going to, you know, start laughing at me, mock me, not want to be around me and so forth. Or I'm not going to have the well done that I'm used to. The fear of failure, the fear of embarrassment, which causes you to stop taking risks. So you stay in a place that's comfortable, comfortable choices. It's comfortable for me to be here. It sounds like, God, I can testify about it on the altar. But the fact is, what is there? Is it a comfortable choice you're taking? Is it a convenient choice that looks like a sacrifice that you've made, but you know in your heart that it wasn't an obedience? It wasn't a call to obedience because obedience is the opposite of convenience. Was it obedience for real? That you shielded yourself. Insecurities are always the biggest one. You know, feeling insecure about yourself, that you're always truly looking for someone to validate you before you move, or you're waiting for like quick fixes, like, oh, let me just do this thing quick, shortcuts and so forth and stuff, just to get that instant approval. Wow, well done. And then again and again and again, that every each each step requires an affirmation from someone. Each step requires a, a you know a well done. Each step requires something before you constantly move. That's convenience. When I feel good, I will move. That's what you're saying. When I feel better, I will move. When I'm ready, I will move. If we had to do things, trust me, today I was like, I'm not even ready. <laughs> not ready, boy, at all. But I can't stick to convenience. I can't stick to comfortable choices. I just have to allow the Holy Spirit to move. And that's what it's all about. Obedience. You might not feel ready. You might not feel seen. You might not feel like you're even valuable. Don't, don't wait to feel ready. Don't wait to feel valuable, even in, even in that sense. Just keep going. And as you go, you will see God. You will hear God. You will, you, you will have those but God encounters where there's little traces of him that you start to see in the details as you continue to make that step. Just keep moving. Insecurity will cut you off of every blessing that God has for you, every opportunity and even an opportunity to bless others. Insecurity shame saying that i am rubbish i am useless i am this is that i am thing that takes place not i did i am so what are those narratives that you are saying or stating to yourself that is causing you to constantly avoid that oh maybe people are gonna judge me for this or maybe people are gonna criticize me for this so let me not do it shame will put you in a place of convenience shame will make you Constantly cower yourself down. Shame will make you take rubbish. Shame will make you take abuse and accept it as normal. Shame will dumb you all the way down. Shame. Shame. Loneliness is another one. Because when you constantly feel lonely, it will make you settle for shallow connections. And sometimes the loneliness does stem from the fact that you are choosing out of convenience. You're choosing friendships, community out of convenience. Friendships that maybe you can gossip with. 
friendships that maybe you don't even you, you don't need to go into depths with so you can come in and just have a facade laugh drink dance whatever and go home there there's there is like a surface level there's no depth so sometimes you may be choosing convenient relationships that makes you lonely and the bible talks about our you know associations whoever you associate with is is who you are you become who you associate with. So what are you choosing? What are you invested in meaningful, deep depth in relationships or just the shallow ones, just to appease your flesh? Just to, yeah, I've got a few people around me. It's okay. How are you investing? What are you choosing in people? Amen. And then stagnation. Again, I've spoken about that. It just keeps you in a place of routine, routine, convenience, routine, routine, never a place of change or growth. You know, you've been in a place for 55 years. You don't want to move because it's just something you're used to. Stagnation. Amen. They may be giving you, you know, promotion here or there or maybe bonuses here and there. But you know in yourself that this is just a comfortable choice. Comfortable choice. It's time to move. You may be serving in a place for so long. It's a comfortable choice. Did God put you there? Did he position you there? It's a comfortable choice. It's a place of convenience. Sometimes we're afraid to start all over again. So we just stay in what's rubbish in order to appease our flesh. Because the, the, the thought of starting again is scary. But I would rather choose scary than choose God rejecting me in the end. Then I've spoken about resentment already. And then anxiety. Anxiety is a big one. Fear all together and stuff like that, which is, you know, when you know you're having these palpitations, when you know your stress levels goes up, when you're having to think of making a decision. And sometimes just the thought process that goes into that makes you feel like, you know what, let me just stick to what's comfortable. Let me just treat, you know, tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. I know that there have been times in my life where I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered to go through this whole thought process. So let me just stick to whatever then when i'm ready that's a convenience a life of convenience i don't want to feel the palpitation i don't want to feel the stress so let me just leave it comfortable choice it's convenience so you may make sacrifices within those choices because this is what i want us to really get into the fact is though they are comfortable choices they are still sacrificial but the point is they are convenience your life will be will look like a convenience lifestyle. That's what I'm trying to get, get to. The fact that you are still making the sacrifices, that's where the enemy is very lovely because he will make you feel like you're making sacrifices, but the fact is, it's a convenient one. It's a convenient one. And God wants us to shift. Amen. So the narratives that we may say is, I'm not good enough. I have to please everyone. I'll never succeed. Life is unfair. I'm alone. People hurt me. I'm not worthy of love. I'll never change. Nobody will ever accept me. I don't deserve happiness. I'm always the victim. So always living a life of, oh, I feel defeated. Oh, everything's always happening to me. Oh, you know, or I'm too old or I'm too young. So as we come here, let's just pause because, you know, Holy Spirit will speak something to you. Maybe hasn't spoken yet, you know, but I want us to pause. If you have a paper, if you have a pen, amen. Think back on some recent actions or decisions that you have made. Maybe it was something like either choosing a job or um, I don't know whether it was relational, whether it's emotional, whether it's mental, whether it's in your health. Whatever choice, maybe pick one or two and um, consider whether the decision leaned towards more towards convenience or sacrifice. As I've spoken about it, as we've come down, think about the ways or decisions or the decisions or the actions you have made this week or maybe in the month of May. And ask yourself, has it leaned more towards convenience or sacrifice? And I'm going to remind us again, 
you may have emptied out your pocket. You may have had to, you know, sacrifice a whole bunch of money to pay a bill. That's not a sacrifice I'm talking about. True sacrifice. Sacrifice that when I'm done with that thing, who am I reflecting? Sacrifice of the fact that I'm not making those vows to myself. Sacrificing the fact that I'm looking unto God. Sacrificing the fact that it's an obedience unto God. It's a call unto God. It's a step towards my depth in Christ. Sacrifice. That it didn't appease my flesh. That, you know, whether I got well done, whether I didn't get well done, I wasn't looking for anything. I just wanted to glorify God. What are the things that I lean towards? More sacrifice or more convenience? What is it? Was I conveniently sacrificing because I knew that, oh, in the end of this, I'm going to get this. Whether that's an internal thing or an external thing. Or was I actually truly sacrificing? How did my heart posture look at the end of the thing that I did? Were you prioritizing comfort and desire and your own desires, or were you actually giving it up because it was a call to God? Think about it. Reflect on it. Consider whether it's, it was truly a sacrifice or whether it was true, it was a convenient sacrifice. Amen. Did it truly bring transformation or was it just a surface level? action that didn't really change anything inside of you and then who did you look more like did you look more like the world or did you look more like god were your actions driven by impulses or were they actually aligned with god's will and character and again i'm going to say it because you know has to be said just because you did it for church or just because you maybe said God said doesn't actually mean God acknowledges it. So think about it because we can slap scripture on things doesn't mean God said. We can do things impulsively and say that was an act of faith when it had nothing to do with faith. It was your impulse. Amen. Think about those ways. Think about where it's become so comfortable, but it was a still a kind of sacrifice to your flesh, but spiritually it did nothing for you. There was no true transformation. There was no true change in you. Your perspective on things are still the same. Your, the way you feel about yourself, feel about others, and maybe even God is still the same. Then was it truly a sacrifice at all? Did it make you become more grudgeful, more bitter, more hateful, more jealous, more envious, more critical, more judgmental, more greedy, more prideful? What, what did it do for you? Did it make you more patient, more loving, more humble? Amen. More accountable, more friendly, more kind, more meek, more gentle. What did it do for you? So consider the state of your heart. Consider whether it was truly obedience or whether it was just for pleasure. And then emotionally, how did you feel after those decisions? Was it a sense of peace? And peace doesn't have to feel like a peace, like, oh, everything is quiet and sh sh when peace like a river. Now, things can still be chaotic, but was there a sense of peace that came with what you did? And then again, the internal transformation. I'm just going to keep repeating that because success isn't measured by external achievements. You can have a whole row of, 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 um, of medals, a whole row of um, you know, um, certificates, a whole row of posters all over London. But if there was no true change, the Bible says that God defines success by measuring our hearts. So if it's not reflecting him, what's the point? And I'll give it as an example, like even for myself, where, you know, I always say this, but even at the more that I think about it is the fact that being able to have certain boundaries in place, which I never, I was literally boundaryless, um, but being able to have boundaries in whatever capacity that looks like, it comes from the fact that, if I do this, um, will God recognize it? Will I do it and, and be grudgeful after? Will I do it 
and talk about it after? Will I do it and, you know, be frustrated? Like, how will I look more of the works of the flesh than the fruit of the spirit? And that's where the confidence in me being able to be like, okay, because it was the point of me looking like I'm sacrificing, but my heart is not there. What's the point of me doing something and God does not recognize it? What's the point? What's the point? So this is where we have to really look to ourselves and say, what am I truly reflecting? Who am I becoming in the midst of all this sacrifice? is an active process, it's not a passive. Convenience is passive. Someone can pull you here, you're going. Someone can pull you there like a puppet, you're going. Someone can tell you, do this, do that, do that, and you're going. That's convenience. Yeah, just go, oh yeah, I can use my gift here. Okay, yeah, oh yeah, I can do this, oh yeah. But sacrifice is active. Sacrifice is truly advocating for yourself god and other sacrifice is a denial of self sacrifice is trusting god that the disciples if nobody comes with me if i if my head get chops off it's unto god sacrifice is an active process yes death of self but expressed through love. And so when we choose convenience, we often, we take the path of passiveness, passivity. It prioritizes self, our own will, you know, our own ways. And so, you know, we just have to be careful with the whole self-love thing. But sometimes self-love can just go all the way and become an idol that we serve instead of actually, you know, a place that we empower ourselves to come back to be even more loving than we should in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Um, and so, yes, let's look at some examples now, because I think I said a few, but let's look at what that actually shows up for you or for me, for all of us, really. So I've got a few examples here. And if you have some examples, you can put them on the chat. Amen. So um, how our own desires can look like sacrifices, but they're not showing up to church. For the sake of appearances, rather than for a true desire for spiritual growth. So do you go to church just to tick it off? I'm here, or if I don't go, people are going to be upset with me and so forth. Why do you go to church? Why do you serve if you do serve? Offering affirmations or so giving affirmations onto people, but you're disregarding their emotional needs. So, you know, that's basically spiritual bypassing. You know, when someone's going through something, you're know, like so using the word of God to like empower them, but at the same time, disregarding them. That's convenience. That's a convenient sacrifice. You're sacrificing your time to offer affirmation, encouragement, prayer and so forth. But if you're disregarding how they feel, are you listening at all? Are you surrendering your own ideology of what you feel that person needs and what you feel the person wants to be able to actually hear what they really want to hear or for you to just be there? Some people don't even want advice, just wanting to be there. Convenient sacrifice. Um, compromising your values to avoid conf confrontation in relationships. And that's, that is a big one because um, I remember I was... Um, through this, um, as I was meditating on this, it may, it, I went back to the scripture, Matthew 5, when it's talking about blessed are the peacemakers. And, you know, the more I kept, list, you know, reading that scripture, I was like, a lot of us think we're peacemakers and we're not. <laughs> like, being a peacemaker actually involves being active. It's actually being where we either turn our cheek and get slapped and spat on or it can be where we are tipping over tables 
And some of us are, I'm going to keep the peace. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to, you know, rock any boats. I'm just going to tiptoe. And every day you're tiptoeing through life and stuff like that and avoiding confrontation. That's a lot of what happens in, in Christian them where we just don't want to come. We don't like conflict. We don't want to speak about certain things and stuff like that. And so we're all shallow, shallow relationships because nobody's correcting nobody. Everybody's offended by accountability. Everybody's offended by how someone said this and said that and whatever. No one wants to be corrected and stuff like that. Everybody just wants to stay in sin and speak about the grace of God. Everybody wants to do their own thing and slap the scripture on everybody. Compromising. So we don't want to confront. We want to, we want to keep the peace in the fact that there is, an, a, there is a conflict that is firing up in us. And we say, oh, blessed are the peacemakers. You're not making peace. You are instead stirring it up even more. Jesus never ran away from conflict. He used wisdom, discernment, and that's what it is to be a peacemaker. Amen. So are you a person that you know what, what you're in is nothing to do with God, but you're just there because you're comfortable. You're just there because that's all you know. You're just there because you're not sure if, you know, if I walk away from this, what's next? Comfortable. So you're compromising at the same time because you don't want to confront what is wicked what is evil what is not right justifying it because it's convenient it's comfortable putting little effort in things and then wanting to be praised whether that's at work whether it's ministry whether it's whatever expressing love to others yet not really interested like there's no, there's a disconnect. I love you, but nothing to show for it. Serving for gain, for security, for flattery, rather than for worship, true worship unto God. Shying away, I've already said this, for uncomfortable conversations to, to feel good by yourself. Convenience. Masking self-serving behaviours as kindness, always giving to people, but in your heart, you just there is a disconnect amen uh, i think i've said most of these things here um saying that you've forgiven someone but you're holding on to things in your heart bitterness resentment seeking revenge and stuff looking for ways in which you want to punish the person and stuff you're having these images in your mind that yeah I've forgiven them but there is some type of wicked seed that is has not been uprooted from your heart against a person doing things for doing sake doing things going the flow yeah I'm gonna pray I'm gonna fast I'm gonna you know um do all the uh, do my devotion and stuff like that but there's no real sense of intimacy you're just doing it because you've been told you're doing it because it's something that you're used to or you're doing it because you know it's part of your walk with god but there is no true intimacy there's no fruit that comes out of it when you come out of that secret place which is jesus you know you still look the same you still sound the same you still look the same amen not wanting to take a break because you feel guilty that someone is going to be upset with you um not taking the time with your family because you feel that other people are going to be upset with you these are all convenient sacrifices you know spending anyhow because you want people to feel happy amen whilst at the same time you're burying yourself in debt it's convenient sacrifices putting on a mask knowing that you yourself you're not okay but you're like yeah everything is good yeah everything is fine convenient sacrifices you know coping with netflix or coping with or oh, i don't know what do we cope with with coke <laughs> coping with chocolate coping with whatever it is coping with whatever you know to be able to appease ourselves that's convenient sacrifice because it's a sacrifice amen it's all sacrifices and so it's not about the what of sacrifice but about the what it's how what is behind the very thing you are doing what is it? Because you might lose sleep over a goal, but what if the goal that you had met was never actually pushed by God? So there are so many tasks that God has asked you to complete, but you're just focused on this one goal that God never called you to. 
So let's look at biblical examples now. Ananias, which I know Prophetess Elisa spoke about la um, last month, um, in terms of what he did, he did, amen, which what he felt was a sacrifice led to death, amen. And so if you think about that for yourself, and that's in Acts 5, you know, ask yourself that, have you ever tried to make yourself look better like Ananias, where you wanted to look generous, but you knowing yourself, it was just to impress others. It had nothing to do with God. It was just a hypocritical type of serving service. It wasn't true service. It wasn't true sacrifice. Um, were you looking for the gain of recognition from others or approval from God even, you know? How have you been dishonest or even hypocritical in your relationships, whether that's with God, whether that's with others? Amen. How has your actions hurt other people in the way that you have given? Like an Ananias, amen, trying to steal and stuff like that and whatever, which caused the death of him. How, how is it making you? When sometimes you feel so empty, you give up yourself and you're like, you feel so empty and you feel alone. Is that because of the how you gave? Was it because of the convenience choices that you were choosing? What is it that you're doing? Saul is a big one where he, um, I, always, I always speak about this one, but I love it because he, this is a lot, a lot of what happens with, within us where we're like, oh, you know, I'm, I've, I've obeyed God and but there's just this, this one instruction that i don't get so let me just do it anyway they just slap his name onto it and say yep yeah, that's god and that's what Saul did so he went into war and stuff and god said don't pick up nothing wait for the instruction of um samuel and because he was like you know the people were talking um and, and on his ears and he was a people pleaser and stuff like that he had his own insecurities so he's like you know what let me just pick a little bit and then let them take some stuff and let me just offer this as a sacrifice unto god God is not a stupid God. And because of that, it cost him his reign. So sometimes we're looking at other people and we're like, oh boy, where this person is was supposed to be me. Yeah, but you gave it away by your disobedience. You gave it away by your convenience choices. So you better just start clapping for that, David, because at the end of the day, if you know that you're that person, that boy, you're constantly disobeying God and God is not asleep. He's still God. We learned that last month and all the months that we talk about it as well. And the fact that love is not just about he, he advocacy is about justice. God is a just God. Amen. So let's just think about that in the way that you find yourself resenting others who seem to have it easier than you. Like, oh God, I've done this for you. And, you know, let me just do this and do that. You know, let me add a little bit of this. or let me add this onto the instruction because I don't know. Let me give God a helping hand and so forth. Do you feel a sense of animosity against your neighbor, against someone around you? Amen. True sacrifice. <laughs> It's not about convenience because if our sacrifices leads us to bitterness and resentment, then we need to check our hearts. We need to check our motives. Amen. Esau is a, is a big one. Genesis 25, 29 to 34, where he actually out of convenience, the man was hungry. <laughs> he was so hungry that when he was offered to trade his birthright, he, he was like, come on. Here we go. He didn't think about the long term. He didn't care about that. He was thinking about his now. What hunger triggers do you have in you that is causing you to give up your birthright? What emotions are clouding your judgment, making unwise decisions, making you give away the things that God has entrusted for you? But because of your impulsivity, because of the hunger that you have, because of your appetite, because you're trying to quench that appetite through things and stuff, for a little bowl of stew, you've given up your birthright. Convenience. Like you want to you wanna sort yourself out now, but what about later? What about later? So how has this become you or is, is, are you Esau at this moment in time where hunger has made you choose unwisely, unwisely, it has made you compromise, it's made you lose certain things, it's made you um, hurt people around you. What has that spirit of Esau done for you? How has it affected your friends? How has it affected your family? How has it affected your future, your destiny? 
Amen. Um, Jonah. <laughs> I love Jonah. Jonah didn't mind preaching to the people that he thought would listen to him. He was like, yep, yeah, take me anywhere. But when God said it's time to go to Nineveh, he said, nope, I'm not going there. Them people are rebellious. They don't like you. I am not stepping a foot there. And he was willing to go and chill out in the whale than to go to where God was leading him to, not knowing that God is God. And if he leads you somewhere, he's going to provide for you, regardless of what is there, whether they're going to, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, Jonah was like, I would rather choose to chill in that well or the fish than for me to go to Nineveh. And that may be us, where God is calling us to places where we're like, God, I'd rather stay here and be a nuisance because <laughs> he was a nuisance on that boat because every everybody stuff started falling off the boat started shaking and stuff like that and he was like lying there like chilling out they were like hey is this you are you the person that's causing it but how come you're just chilling out relaxing and stuff like that and all our stuff is falling out are you becoming a nuisance in someone's life because of your disobedience because of your choices nuisance things are being people's lives are being destroyed certain things are being you know disgruntled and stuff people are um, they're losing things because of your decisions and you're trying to justify that they're not going to listen to me oh i don't know what's going to happen there i don't know if i what i'm going to lose what what is this selfish Jonah said, I'm not going. I'll, I'll rather stay where I'm comfortable. Like, let me have an easy crowd, a crowd that will love me, a crowd that will, you know, energize me, a crowd that will clap for me, a, a crowd that knows me by name. I'm not going to deliver because I don't know. But if God sends you somewhere, because when he eventually went, they repented. Thousands of people repented. So what are you doing that you have created a nuisance in someone's life? at this moment in time what are you ignoring what are the instructions god has given you that you're ignoring what are the things that you're running away from what are the things or you know that are too uncomfortable too hard that you're saying no to what are you reluctant to step out of to step into what are you trying to control through your service to god what is misaligned with god what are the biases that you have about people that you don't want to go to where god is, is god calling you to what are the, the things that you have trapped in your heart that you don't want to go because he had biases about that that specific um town that they definitely that's what it says about the renewal of your mind because of what he thought the people were and and so forth he didn't want to go but god had already touched their hearts to be able to receive him so what are those biases? What are those perceptions you have about people or about a thing that you don't want to jump into where God is telling you to jump until you're ready to stay in that whale, in that fish? Time to come out. It's time to do the difficult things. It's time to challenge yourself. It's time to do the necessary thing. It's necessary. It's not an option. Stop being a nuisance in someone's life and step forth and be who God has called you to be. Amen. So let's think about those that truly live a life of sacrifice. Abraham, he left where he knew and he continued. And maybe that's because he saw his dad settle and he thought, boy, I'm going wherever you take me to. So whereas Lot was like, I want to go to a place that is done, done up. So he went to a place that was green. And so Abraham was like, God, wherever you are, I will go. Whatever I have to drop, he was willing to sacrifice his son in order to go forth to where God was. His only promise and stuff. He said, I don't mind. I'm going to sacrifice it for God. Sacrifice is not convenient. It doesn't even make sense. But he was willing to sacrifice. He was able to go all the way. That's what God is calling us into. That he doesn't want us to have this convenient thing of, oh, yeah, I'll give you Ishmael, but not, but not Isaac. No, no, no. He said, I'm taking Isaac. Yeah, I'm taking him. I'm not even going to tell Sarah. I'm just going to go and sacrifice him, whatever God he knows best. True sacrifice. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't even make sense, but it's sacrificial and God honors true sacrifice. So look at your life and say to yourself, look, I've made so many sacrifices and God hasn't honored one. Maybe it's because God hasn't seen it as a sacrifice. Maybe it was just a convenient one for you, but God has not recognized it. God will not honor nonsense. If it's not from him, he's not going to honor it. If it's to satisfy your flesh and to idolize yourself and to big up your own self, he doesn't serve. He's not going to serve your idols. He's not going to serve your pride. Amen? Daniel. Daniel said, I am not going to eat like how you guys eat. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to compromise myself because me eating is going to cause me to worship and idolize whatever. So he was like, no. 
how are you in your workplace? How are you outside? How are you uh, amongst um, people that are not of your faith? Because it's easy to be a living sacrifice with the saints. But how are you when you're around people? Do you look the same? Do you talk the same? Do you eat the same? Do you drink the same? Do they know that you're even not, you're, you, do they even know you're a minister of God? Do they know you're a disciple of God? Do they know you're a child of God? Do they know that you serve God? Do they know Jesus? He defied every law. He said, oh, you told me not to pray. I'm going to pray. You told me you told me I need to eat this. I'm not going to eat that. I'm choosing my own diet. Thank you very much. I'm not going to um, 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 obey whatever you want to do. He, he went and counteracted everything in order for God to be glorified. And in that, going into the lion's den and all that, sacrifice. That is sacrifice to defile things that is normalized in society. But he said, not me. What you tell me not to do, let me do what God said. Simple. Whatever the risks are, I'm going to do it. Paul, the biggest one, someone who, who crucified all the Christians and then all of a sudden now he's he's standing for Christians that he got martyred in the end. He, he went all the way with God. And sometimes we are that person of, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I remember when I used to be in a club. You know, I remember when I used to do this. I remember I used to have sex every single day. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'll talk about something else. no. Paul spoke about everything. He said, I know I was like this and I know I was like that, but I have encountered God. And when you encounter God, there is no shame. There is no shame. You can speak about everything. And when the enemy tries to throw arrows and when the enemy tries to accuse you and when the enemy tries to talk about you, when the enemy tries to push you down, when the enemy tries to throw these darts at you, you can say, I don't care. I'm a child of God. I know what I encountered with God. That I will never live a life that is lukewarm, that is below average. I don't care. And I'm not saying for you to go on Facebook and start creating ministry out of your pain. Never. But I'm saying that when God gives you the unction to speak about something or to do something, never say to yourself that I don't want to be a hypocrite. Because that means we're all hypocrites because we've all got a past. But when God calls you to speak, speak. Don't withhold Go all the way. He faced imprisonment. He faced hardship in all the thing. When we speak, when we sing these songs, praise the Lord. Oh my soul. All these things that we sing and stuff like that, they were in prison. They were in prison. He was writing these things that the things that we're reading in the Bible. Paul was in prison. And he still managed to seek refuge in God. He still managed to speak. Imagine he said, oh, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to go to jail and stuff like that because, you know, I was a prisoner and I don't want to be a hypocrite. No, don't let the enemy lie to you. Ruth, beautiful example that speaks about community, that speaks about friendships, that speaks about um, family, everything you want. Where she was that wherever you go, I will go. Do you have friends around you that will stand by you no matter what? And not where you're doing rubbish because you need to, <laughs> they need to tell you off. But I mean, like, Someone who you know will stand by your side. Someone who you know that regardless will sacrifice. That was Ruth for not Naomi. Amen. She left everything that she knew and she said, I'm going with you. I'm going to serve your God. I'm going to go with you. Do you even give people the space for you to even become a Ruth in their life? Do you even have a Naomi in your life? Do you have people around you? Loyalty that was true sacrifice where she said i'm gonna i'm gonna let go of my idols i'm gonna let go of the gods that i know in my hometown i'm gonna go with you i, I know that you know that you, my husband is dead and, and there's nothing really for me and stuff like that but i'm gonna go with you i'm gonna go who have you been to to who, have you been that person to someone sacrifice she gave it up all up and what happened in the end in each and every one that we see in all these scriptures powerful blessings in the end god honors obedience amen so again reflection don't be this person where oh, i'm independent woman i don't need no friends i don't need no friends and all these kind of things that's lies of the enemy we need people the bible talks about being able to confess to the people around us so that it puts us into our, our um, spiritual tone it puts us back into our rightful standing with christ we need people so don't let the enemy lie to you to make you feel like oh i don't need people and stuff like that or be so shallow that there's no depth in your relationships there should at least be one true friend or one person that there is a depth that you can go deeper in it can't be shallow because then you have to ask yourself is it you because it can't be that the person there's no one that there is no depth you can go just gossiping or just oh yeah yeah yeah. 
No, let's go deeper. Who are you willing to leave everything in order for that person to go further, in order for that person to have life again? Imagine if no, uh, um, Ruth was like, I'm going at the other one, Orpah. And it was like, she was like, I'm going, what would have really come of Naomi? Let's think about that. Because sometimes we want to we want to think about ourselves. Where sometimes the decision that we're making is because we need to give someone else life. We need to make someone else see that there is hope. There is still hope for you. It's not about me. It's about you. There is still hope for you. And that's what Ruth was to Naomi. Amen. So let's think about that in Jesus' mighty name. So again, what, what makes us kind of go into that state? And I'm just going to, you know, we're coming to a close soon. Amen. Trauma, definitely a big one because it makes trauma makes us in, in that kind of hyper vigilant mode where we're constantly like, you know, I need I need safety. And so it does make us make, make us lean towards convenience where I don't want to, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to get these certain flashbacks or whatever. And it does push us into a place of trauma. But again, convenience is just saying, I'm going to stop there true sacrifice is saying i'm going to get the help i need so that i can give god my full yes so that i can love and serve people well true sacrifice is saying i'm going to undergo being put under in order for that true work to be done in order for me to truly show up for god for real not show up as my trauma, not show up as my pain or my past, but show up as God wants me to be. People pleasing is definitely a big one where, you know, it's like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make people upset. So let me just go with the flow. And then we hide ourselves in order for someone else to think where sometimes that is sacrifice in itself, but sometimes you know in yourself, that's what I said, it's something, it's a heart question, you know in yourself when you're actually people pleasing, you know in yourself that God has called you to certain things, you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt this person, so let me just stay here, go forth in Jesus' mighty name, pride is a big one, we know the same with Satan, his whole Oh, his whole position was sacrificed because he wanted to be like God. He was like, I can do better. Why are people worshiping you? I can do better and stuff like that. He felt like he was the one that was taking the show. Sometimes we have people that feel that they, they're better than the leader. Come on, let us truly surrender. Pride comes before a fall. Um, and I've spoken about fear of rejection. I've spoken about lack of self-worth. I've talked about, I've spoken about um, comfort zone. I've talked about avoidance which is a big one either it's avoidance of com uncomfortable co conversation but also discomfort um instant gratification so just wanted to feel that thing now 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 tiktok social media them things there big one <laughs> where it does cause us to compromise it does cause us to kind of tone down in the things that we do and the things that we're in the, in the in the things that God has called us to, because sometimes TikTok, social, uh, Instagram, Facebook tries to tell us what we're supposed to say and not say. We have all these memes. We have all these like, you know, the things that are on posters and stuff like that, which can sound nice, like, you know, let go, let God, you know, God helps those that help themselves. These things which are not biblical, but we use them as posters and stuff like that. And it just tones down the truth of God's word. Amen. And then obviously lack of vision. If you have no vision for your life, if you don't have a revelation of who you are, if you have no vision of who you are, you are going to settle. People are going to tell you who you are and you're going to go through it. People are going to tell you what to do and you're going to go through it. People are going to prophesy certain things to you and you're going to go through it. You're going to go with the fruits. You're going to go through the emotions because you don't know who you are, where you're going and what you're positioned on earth to do. So a lack of vision can definitely cause you to settle. And that's a big one because people move from church to church, prophecy to prophecy, because they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. And they see people moving around and stuff like that. And they're like, why is it that person's doing that? Because you have a lack of vision for yourself. So you're looking at other people to try and like see, oh, maybe this, I should do this. Maybe I should do that. And God is like, no, let God reveal it to you. No one can reveal. The people When people prophesy, there should be a, a connection. There shouldn't be like, a, oh, it should be like, oh, confirmation. So the Holy Spirit should reveal who you are before anybody else. And that's the, you need to spend time in Christ. Don't go to all these conferences and stuff like that. And they prophesy to you and stuff like that. And there's no, there's no connection. You're like, ooh, then you start to live out someone else's prophecy instead of God's word for your life. 
let God show you who you are. Amen. And then allow other people, the true sound voices, catapult you and continue to push you where you need to be. But you need to ensure that the Holy Spirit is a revelation of who you are before you go anywhere. Amen. Peer pressure, spiritual blindness. A lot of people are blind. They don't realize that they're blind. Amen. So, they, you know, the Bible says that how, how can you walk together if if you're not, if there's no agreement? And sometimes that is it. Spirit, body, mind. It doesn't have to be a person. Spirit, body, soul. If there is a disconnect with the three, you are in disagreement, full stop. Amen. So let's think about that. And then spiritual warfare, the enemy is a liar. The enemy is a thief. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he will lie to you. He will whisper to you. He will try and sow um, tars and all these kind of things, weeds and stuff like that, crops. And he will try to distribute certain meals to you. And he will try to offer you certain things and stuff. And that's why it's important to stay in your word. That's why it's important to be around sound voices. That's why it's important to hear the right things and, and read the right things and stuff like that to ensure you're discerning what is real, what is acceptable, what is truth, what is holy unto God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. And again, priorities. Your priorities are all over the place. All over the place. There is no true priority. You're just like, oh, okay, one day this is my priority. The next day this is my priority. What is your priority for this season? So you know that you're not being pushed here and there just to appease yourself. Amen. And then what are the effects? And I have kind of spoken about this already. Um, shallow relationships. No growth or limited. So like little tiny growth. You may get a promotion here and there. But that's it. There's no true growth. Amen. Temporary pleasures. So those quick fixes that you feel good in the now, then maybe when you get home or two months later, you start to feel this kind of depressive or um, low mood again and stuff like that. Missed opportunities. Um, unresolved issues that fly up all over the place. F failure to impact is a big one. The Bible talks about that. That we are a light amen we are a light we're supposed to reflect and we're supposed to be an aroma and when we are choosing to have comfortable choices and stuff like that it you your impact is just it is it's, there is no impact and we are called to make impact in the lives of those around us amen so that's a big one and then regret you know when we do live our lives where we're like we don't do anything we we don't allow god to lead us and stuff like that there is a sense of regret and unfulfillment and that's why you see like certain people don't just do so many things at once but the very thing they're supposed to do, they don't do regret and then 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 they start to look you know and they get like time anxiety like oh my gosh time is running out let me do this let me do that let me do this let me do that and stuff like that so Let's look onto that and see to us and, and really check ourselves and see what in my life is a convenient sacrifice. It's a sacrifice, all right, but it's a convenient one. The distractions, the masks, the shallow connections, the busyness of life, all these things. Let's look into it and say, you know, where have I stopped? Where have I stopped? So I end here. Amen. I end here. To say that regardless of where you are in your walk with Christ, God is calling us to come deeper. We are in mid mid year. Don't live your life, don't come to the like December or to the November conference and so forth. And you just look at your life and you're like, oh dear. Don't live a life of regret. Don't live your life just going with the flow. Step out. Because God has called you, you know, you are worthy of everything God has called you to be and to do here on earth. Amen. Who are you becoming? Because who you become is more important than what you do. You can sacrifice everything, but what's the point if you do not reflect Christ? If the aroma that comes out of you is not that of love, then what's the point? If it's making you more suspicious than trusting, if it's making you more bitter 
than loving, if it's making you more angry than gentle, if it's making you more jealous than accepting, if it's making you more sad than joyful, then what's the point? What is the point? Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. So as we end this, just ask yourself those questions. Have I leaned more towards convenient sacrifices? Is all my choices filled with convenience? Is it appeasing my flesh? Is it making people around me love me more? But yet there's a sense of emptiness. There's a sense of void. Like I know that God is calling me for more. It's wherever you are, just lift up your hands. And now we're going to end this in a closing prayer. But you speak to God. You tell him the ways in which you have actually turned your back on him. You open your mouth wherever you are. And you say to you, say to God, you, you repent, repent, repent. Don't justify, don't go into this place of condemnation and oh, all these narratives. No, rebuke that spirit of condemnation. Rebuke that spirit of regret rebuke that spirit of, of um, discontentment rebuke every spirit right now that is going to try and make you go into this judgmental self-condemnation self-judgment self-hatred and you say to satan to shush and right now just open your mouth right now and just say that god i don't want to give you rubbish anymore i don't want to live my life letting everybody around me love me but yet that, that nothing about me is loving, that they speak about the good things that I do, yet I know in my heart that there is something I was looking for other than you, oh Lord. There is something that I needed from that person and they didn't give me. So I went to the next person and they didn't give me and I went to the next person and all of my life I'm seeing a whole lot of cycle of pattern in my life where I'm giving sacrificially but what I really want is love what I really want is acceptance what I really want is to be celebrated what I really want is to be used what I really want is to be held up high what I really want you know what you want and it's time to be honest and say, look, I felt I was giving these sacrifices. I felt that giving a little bit of my time was a sacrifice. But in my heart of heart, my heart wasn't there. My heart wasn't there. Or I may have done some stuff and I know that God hasn't even positioned me there. But because I want to feel, I want to, I want to look appear nice or because i want to you know ensure that this person like i want to be grateful for the things that they have done for me i want to stay in this position but the fact is it's a sacrifice that is too costly for you it's too costly because it all has a cost but it's too costly it's costing you your life it's costing you your eternal life it's costing other people around you. You're being a nuisance in a lot of people's life. It's time to repent. It's time to say, I'm not going to give superficial sacrifices anymore. I'm not going to make choices that are comfortable because I don't want people to feel bad because I don't want people to let me go because I don't want to let go of this person because this person has been there for me and, da -da -da -da, and all these kind of things that we say to ourselves. Honor God. If my sacrifice doesn't honor God, why am I here? What's the point? If you like literally, what's the point? If you're doing things for me, what's the point? Because at the end of the day, when we are going to heaven, I am not gonna be there with you. I'm either gonna go to hell, God forbid, or heaven. We are all gonna stand by ourselves. Heather's not gonna be there. Camille's not gonna be there. Esther, Nikki, Serene, Alicia, none of us are gonna be there when God is saying good and faithful or get away from me. So I say to you, do things for God and be bold about it. What are the boundaries I need to set in place? What are the things that I need to let go of? What are the things that I know that I am not positioned in the right place and I need to let go of it? I don't care if they're gonna gossip about me. I don't care if they're gonna throw a curse. The Bible says that if they curse you and there is no nest to land it cannot come near you anyway be obedient to god have that boldness the radical boldness that abraham paul peter ruth all these people had there was a radical boldness in them to say i don't care i'm going to do it anyway 
oh, my family don't believe in therapy. Who cares? If I am unloving and therapy is going to make me be the person God is going to call me to be, why am I disregarded? Because people don't believe in it. Because people are preaching nonsense on the altar. Who cares? Where is God leading me to? My, my health is not as good as it's supposed to be. But I, 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 I want to still go and party. I still want to drink with my, with my friends and family. Stop it. And be a living sacrifice. It says present every faculty unto God. So don't be passive with your life. I know how it is to be passive. We just go with the flow and yes, yes, yeah, yeah, all these kind of things. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing it for God. I've, I've known God all my life. I'm doing it for God. No, come on. We need to mature. Paul said, mature. Stop drinking on breast milk. It's time to mature. It's time to move forward. It's trying to have a true relationship with God. It's time to stop allowing social media to tell you who God is and know God for yourself. It's time to get off that specific position or whatever you're in and you know that God hasn't called you to and get off. It's time to be radical for Jesus. Sacrifice and aroma, love, obedience, trusting God through and through. What has God told you to do? Not what has someone told you to do. What has God told you to give up? Not what you want to give up. Not what you feel your season is supposed to be. Not what the church has declared your season to be. What has God told you to give up? What are the things in you that you need to still deny, but you're accepting and justifying it? What are those things? How are you showing up? Let's be honest and real with ourselves. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Don't, don't let, don't be the one that's given. The Bible even says about the Pharisees. They did everything. When you look at them, they were like wonderful, perfect. They, 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 the Bible says there was a man and um, he went to God and Jesus and he said to him that, I, I fulfilled all the, I've fulfilled the whole law. I've done what you, I've, I don't steal, I don't commit adultery, I don't this, I don't that. And then Jesus said, but there's, there's one thing you, you need to do. And he said, what? He said, you need to give up your wealth. And he turned away sadly. Now, this is not saying you need to give up your wealth, because that's what people will preach to try and get money off you. This is to say that God was pointing out the one thing that was getting in the way of truly being a living sacrifice. And because he didn't want to do that one thing, he walked away. He walked away. What's that one thing that God is calling you to, to do, to let go, to start, to step in, to step out, to continue, to go even further, to go even deeper? What is it? How is your season looking? How are you supposed to show up in the season that you are? What is it that God is calling you to do? Because sometimes it might not be a, a doing thing per se, as in like, you know, go start doing all these kind of things or whatever. But there are things, as I said, internal as well. Things that you know, if it's not transforming you into the image of God, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. If you're doing it just to go with the flow and told yourself by the end of the year, I will do it. I'll do what God told me to do in the beginning or I'm just giving myself time. We don't know if tomorrow we're dead. So you do not own time. So whatever God is telling you to do, do it now. Do it now. Do it now whether it's to make the phone call, whether it's to forgive someone and forgive them for real, whether it's to truly reconcile with someone and reconcile with them for real, whether it's to go back to the person you've been backbiting and gossiping about and stuff like that and, and, and literally go and apologize, confess your faults, whether it's literally letting go of whatever you're, you're holding on to and saying, God, I, I relieve it. I don't even know how my life is going to look like. Whatever. Whether it's a job, whether it's a ministry, whether it's, it's, it's your own thought, beliefs and whatever, you're comfortable with certain feelings and emotions about a perception of people whatever it is let it go because it's a sacrifice that is convenient for you and not recognized by god as simple as that don't twist the word of god to make your own gain let god through the holy spirit you can you've tried it on your own and you went back to familiarity it's time to move forward it's time to move forward it's time to live for god and live for god for real 
in Jesus' mighty name. Live for God for real. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done playing pretense. We're done, done, done. Come on, we're done. Finished. We're done. Live for God for real. Honor God for real. I want to have a butt, butt God encounter. Some of the butt God encounters you're having, they're not even butt God. <laughs> Oh Lord, oh my soul. They're not even but God encounters. They're your own encounters. They're your own encounters that the enemy is using to, to destroy you. Position yourself well so you can truly have a but God encounter. For real. For real. One that lasts, not one that is temporary. One that lasts. It adds no sorrows to it. One that lasts. In Jesus' mighty name. So let me finish talking before I start stepping on toes, which I don't really care about. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if I'm stepping on toes. I'm going to be obedient to God. That's it. It's not convenient, but it needs to be said. As simple as that. So we thank God and thank you for listening. Honor God. Obey God. Do what he tells you to do. Amen. Don't be that thing where you just want to please people and stuff like that. We are all ungrateful beings, and that's just a fact. We are all ungrateful. All, every single one of us are un ungrateful. So if you're living for man, there's no point. Next year, they will say you didn't do a thing for them. Yeah? So live for God. Obey God. Do what he tells you to do. And ensure that you are fruitful. Are fruitful of having all these access that all the external stuff just added things but ensure that your fruit your heart look anything that makes my heart shift a little bit to to get a bit funny i'm letting go of that's the that's my decision if i know that it's going to shift me a bit if, if my thought pattern starts to get funny i disengage i'm like i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna allow satan to dominate my mind and make me start to think funny i disengage immediately and then i set the boundary that needs to be set do what you need to do to ensure that your heart posture remains growing in Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Amen. So now i'll leave you for the closing prayer and then announcement and then we are off so thank you so much for joining god bless you amen 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 convenient sacrifice Oh, what a God we serve. Hallelujah. Oh, dearly Father, we come before your throne, dear Jesus, with a pure art, a clean art of sacrifice we're not going to do it in a convenient way but we're going to do it in a sacrificing way unto the lord you have you have put it in um other's mouth to say all that she said. But I just want to thank you, dear God. I just want to thank you that our hearts was open, that our mind was open, that you will lead us in the right direction, in the right path, dear Jesus. You will give us a, a renewed mind. You, you will give us a renewed soul. You will give us a renewed heart. And you will let everything that is 
sacrificial unto you, dear Jesus. Be in the right order, be in the right way, be in the right, the right tune that 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 is according to you, according to your will, according to your grace, according to your mercy, dear Jesus. So then the Father, I just I just pray that each and every one of us, dear Father, will have a sacrificial mindset. You will renew our mind as well, dear Father. If if that hasn't happened or that is not taking place in our lives, dear Father, we surrender our heart unto you. We repent. We repent unto you, dear Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. So, dear the Father, I ask you for a sacrificing life, dear Jesus. I ask you for each and every one of us, dear Father, that we will be able to be like, be like Ruth, be like Esther, be like Abraham, be like Isaac, be like Moses. In Jesus' mighty name. So, dear Father, just let us able to take all what you have you have said unto us, dear Father, in Jesus' mighty name. All that you have said, dear Father, in Jesus' mighty name. May we may may we be able to to take it on board, dear Father. Be able to use whatever whatever it is that 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 jump out at us, dear Father, in Jesus' mighty name, in whatever um Heather has has spoken about, dear Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Just help us to be to be humble, to have a loving heart so that we can we can flourish so that we can we can give give unto others their father so that we we can we can we can smile and truthfully smile their jesus so these things i ask of you in jesus mighty name amen Good evening, everyone. Um, just like to say, what a blessed and powerful message from Dr. Heather. I've got a few announcements to share. Um, Island Shame Worship Conference 2024. The theme is But God. Saturday, the 2nd of November, save the day. The second announcement is next month meeting is on the Saturday, the 6th of July. Prayer meeting leaded by Minister Camille and Minister Nikki. And you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Our Instagram name is called Unashamed Worship. And also to follow up the message that took, that took place today, you can find us on our YouTube channel. Take care and be blessed. Bye. <laughs>